Good morning to you from the Church of St Michael and All Angels Bassett in the parish of North Stoneham and Bassett as we gather virtually for our Eucharist this morning. If you are joining us later in the day or if you are joining us from elsewhere in the country or the world you are very welcome to be with us this morning. Our service begins with the singing of the hymn Brightest and best are the sons of the morning. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And, and we, we have, have seen, seen his, his glory. The order of service for this morning has been sent out by email attachment to those who ask for it. And it's also available to download from our website. If you haven't got a copy, you might like to do that, but you're also welcome just to sit and listen and join in in the familiar words. Today, the second Sunday of Epiphany, our theme is the calling of the first disciples. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past 
and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. David will now read our Gospel reading for today. A reading from the Gospel of St John, chapter 1. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael, Coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see the heaven opened and the angels of God ascending 
and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Most of us are very familiar with the account of the call of the first disciples as it's told in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke. And because of that familiarity, when we hear this account from the Gospel of John, it can come as a bit of a surprise. The Mark account, repeated by Matthew and Luke, is quite straightforward. Jesus is on the beach of the Sea of Galilee, and he calls two brothers, who are fishermen, Andrew and Simon Peter, and then two other brothers who are fishermen, James and John. And then later, in all three Gospels, he calls Matthew, or Levi, the tax collector. John was probably aware of Mark's account, and he chooses to give us something rather different, and possibly more historically correct. Before the passage which we've just heard, John the Baptist has indicated to two of his disciples Andrew, and another disciple who is not named, that Jesus is the Messiah. And so they set off and follow Jesus. Andrew goes and tells his brother Simon Peter. And then comes the part that we have just heard, where Jesus calls Philip, and Philip goes and tells Nathanael that he has found the Messiah. Nathaniel is far from convinced. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He exclaims. But the next day, Nathaniel meets Jesus for himself and has a conversation with him, which causes him to recognize Jesus as the Messiah and to change his mind totally. There are several things which are interesting about this account and they probably explain why John has decided to tell it this way. This morning I'd like to focus just on two of them. Firstly, it is only Philip who is directly called by Jesus. All the others become disciples because someone else pointed them in that direction. John the Baptist points Andrew and the unnamed disciple towards Jesus and they become his followers. Andrew, having found the Messiah, goes off and brings his brother Simon Peter to Jesus. And Philip, the only one of the five directly called by Jesus, goes off and tells Nathanael. Of the five in this account who become followers of Jesus, only one of them is directly called by Jesus himself. It is a reminder of how much we need one another in our Christian faith. Not just to bring us to Christ, but to support and encourage each other on our journey. Our individualistic age tends to think that you can be a Christian on your own, without others. But we all need one another. The wider universal church, the church in our country and diocese, the fellowship of the church in this parish. To share the message of Jesus and to support each other, particularly through tough and difficult times like the ones we're currently going through. During this pandemic, one of the things that has become much clearer to us is that as human beings, we are designed to live in community and relationship, and that the way each of us behaves has consequences for others. Secondly, Nathaniel's experience of having his previously held views and expectations 
challenged by Jesus is not unique. Drawing on Old Testament references, particularly those in Micah, Jesus helps Nathanael to recognize him as the Messiah. I've often said in my life that following Jesus is not for those who want a comfortable or an unchanging life. Jesus challenged Nathanael's preconceptions and today he often challenges ours. It can be very uncomfortable and at times it can take us to places where perhaps we would prefer not to go. But ultimately, we know with God that this will be right. For we have the sure hope that, like Nathaniel, we will see heaven opened. During this pandemic, we found our lives being challenged in many ways. And we are being made to think about what is really important and if the values that we're living by are the right ones. The challenge to change our behaviour, to halt the spread of the virus and care for one another is only one of those. There are also challenges to change how we live in future, to help prevent the serious crisis of climate change, of what work we do, how we spend our money to ensure that there is creative and satisfying work for all, and of how we look after our own well-being and that of those close to us in a way which may improve not just our own lives but also the lives of others. As Christians, we have the sure hope that God is with us in and through all of this. And we look forward to the full glory of God's kingdom being revealed. Ever since the death of Jerry Marsden, of Jerry and the Pacemakers, a lot of people have been reminded of his best known hit from 1963. It's become the sort of anthem of Liverpool Football Club. But when Jerry sang You'll Never Walk Alone, it was not an original song. It comes from the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical Carousel, first performed in 1945. And in the musical, it's sung first by Nettie for her cousin Julie, after Julie's husband Billy has died in tragic circumstances. The words are poignant and powerful because they're honest. Life can be challenging and tough, and sometimes it takes courage just to keep going. But then the song resonates with the Christian faith that we're never alone on the journey. Others are with us. God is with us, and we journey with Christ, who is our light and our hope, with a view to the dawning of a better day. These words sum up much of what I've been trying to say this morning, and don't worry, I'm not about to sing them. When you walk through a storm, keep your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart. And you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone.
Let us now declare our faith in the God whom we seek to follow and who is always with us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Anne will now lead us in our prayers. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father for the Church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. In our prayers this morning, the response to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the progress of the distribution of the vaccine in our city, across our country and across the world. We thank you for the NHS staff and other frontline workers and volunteers that continue to risk their lives to save us and protect us. Help us, O oh Lord, to continue to stick to the rules laid down for our protection and to continue to pray for the safety and protection of others, for our families, friends, colleagues and neighbours, both locally and globally. Please take a moment now to recall those whom God lays on your heart to pray for and ask for God's blessing and protection upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we pray for the leaders of our country, for local government and for their advisers. We ask that you will grant them wisdom, compassion and justice for the most vulnerable and to guide and inform their decision making at this time. We ask that our country and, our com and other countries alike would assist in helping to fund the vaccine for those living in poorer communities across the globe. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our Lord. prayer. Holy God, we pray for those who are lonely and frightened, for those who fear the future, and for those who feel anxious or depressed. We ask that by your Holy Spirit, you will comfort them, bring your light into their lives, to shine like the dawn and to give them your re reassurance and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray too for our parish pastoral team and ask that you would give them strength and courage to continue to support those in the parish. 
we lift up the families of the parish pastoral team to you and ask for your protection over them. We thank you for the contacts being made in North Stoneham Park and ask for a growth in fellowship and care amongst and beyond our congregations. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for families and those who are homeschooling. We pray for patience and for working technology in order that our children and young people can grow and learn during this difficult time. We pray for protection from all harm for our children and young people and ask that you would fill their homes with love and joy and nutritious healthy food, particularly those receiving free school meals. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, help us to remember to give thanks in all circumstances and to help those that are struggling. We thank you for our local basics bank and ask that you continue to bless those that volunteer to provide support and to help to sort and distribute food and other provisions to the most vulnerable across our city. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we pray for the people of Uganda following the presidential elections this week. We ask for justice and mercy to prevail and for the safety of those who stand up for justice and fairness in this nation. We pray too for our Burma link and ask for your favour and blessing for the work of St Andrew's Church in a displaced persons camp in Ituta where it is difficult to get food, as the border with Thailand is closed. Merciful God, we ask for the provision of vital supplies needed to sustain life. Please protect and encourage the volunteers who are carrying out your work. May they know your presence, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for the recovery of those who have been ill and pray for all who are in need of God's healing, comfort and peace and those who care for them. We continue to pray for those on our parish list. For Kelly, Kevin, Lucy, Tom, Lynn, Heather, Dorothy, Patrick, Luke, Rahelio, John, Vicky, Yvonne, Joan and Dennis, and Margaret. We ask for your healing, O Lord, to ease their pain and suffering and to encourage them in the knowledge that they are not alone. We continue to pray for Beryl, for Joyce, and all those who have died recently, as well as all those known personally to us, and for all those whose anniversary falls at this time. We ask that you draw near to them and hold them close through the coming days. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, give us grace to live our lives in the spirit of hope, love and thanksgiving. And we ask that you accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. 
do write in the comments if you are able. Lord, accept your people's gifts, not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nation. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the life of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Details of all the announcements are on the weekly news sheet which has been circulated and they're also available on our website. Draw your attention, if I may, just to a couple of them. Uh, firstly, to remind you that we have no services actually open to the public in January. This is to try and help keep everybody safe and prevent the spread of this terrible virus. But we are continuing with our worship online on Sundays, both here from St. Michael's and from St. Nicholas at 10 o'clock, and also from St. Nicholas at 4 on Sunday afternoon. Morning prayer happens each day, Monday to Friday. You may join the Zoom morning prayer hosted from All Saints or the Facebook Live one at 9 o'clock, and night prayer is on Monday and Wednesday at 9. We are approaching the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, often called Candlemas, and we are arranging for a meditation via Zoom on the actual day itself, the 2nd of February, at 7pm in the evening. If you would like to be part of this, then please do book online or via the parish office. Thank you for joining us for our worship today. It's really good to know that you are there with us and it's not just the three of us here uh, in St Michael's. Wish you all the very best for this coming week. And before we close, let me assure you of God's blessing. Christ the Son of God, complete in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks, and, and praise, praise to, to God. God.